And to be fair, I did keep looking at it and the interest rate was actually okay. It was good. That's why I never did anything about it. Huh. But it had, I was literally only sitting on, you know, we were under 50 and we only had 15 years of the mortgage left to pay. So clearly we were paying a lot more capital and a lot less of the interest. Yeah. And in my mind, I was thinking that's a good thing. Yeah. But it actually really hindered us when it came to servicing because we were just trying to get an investment mortgage and not touch that. Huh. And then it all came about that, well, you don't really have the servicing, even though we thought we were doing really well. Yeah. You're listening to Property Investor Tales, stories from the front yard. Here's your host, Tabitha Bright. Hello and welcome to Property Investor Tales, stories from the front yard, where I get to talk to property investors from around Australia about their investing journey. My name's Tabitha Bright and I'm the head of coaching here at Positive Real Estate, where we help people build wealth through property. With over 8,000 clients across Australia and New Zealand, there are some incredible stories to tell, which hopefully make your investing journey that little bit easier and will inspire you along the way. Today, my guest is our fabulous CFO, our Chief Financial Officer here at Positive Real Estate, Lynn Sampson. And today we discuss being an accountant in the Guernsey Islands, uh, how buying the best that you can stretch to has served Lynn and Ian so, so well, and why apartments counter to a lot of common thought are actually an incredibly lucrative investment. So enjoy this conversation with Lynn. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to the podcast today. My name's Tabitha Bright. As you guys know, head of coaching here at Positive Real Estate. Today, I have the fabulous Lynn with me. Now, Lynn is our CFO here at Positive Real Estate. She's been with us for around five years. And like all of our team, um, they're either on the path to investing or investing in real estate. Um, that We are the cooks that eat our own cooking. Uh, Lynn and her husband, Ian, um, have done a fantastic property deal recently that we're going to talk about. Um, Ian uh, is actually our COO, our Chief um, of Operations here at Positive Real Estate. So they really are the power team extraordinaire here at Positive. <laughs> so uh, Lynn, welcome to today's podcast. Hi, Tab. Thanks a lot for having me. <laughs> Super exciting. And um, I love to twist all the team's arm into uh, an interview. <laughs> Um, and, uh, you know, uh, we also have lots of client interviews, as you guys know. So, Lynn, tell me a little about you and Ian and your journey, because you're not from Australia. Where did you where, where did you start? Where did you meet? What was some of the journey? Because you've had a really interesting journey. Okay. Uh, so we're both from uh, Zimbabwe uh, and pretty much got, went from Zimbabwe to South Africa uh, did a stint in the Channel Islands in Guernsey in banking, which was very eye-opening. Uh, <laughs> then moved on to London. We were in London for eight years. Wow. And we've now lived in Australia for 20 years. So for me, I've lived here longer than I've lived anywhere else in the world. So Right, right. So, so quite the journey. And the Guernsey Islands, tell me a little bit about that, because immediately I think tax avoidance, tax avoidance and all sorts of things when I hear of that. It's up there with... Uh, Oh, where is it? Um, the Bahamas, right? <laughs> yeah, not, not, not quite. So, so Channel Islands is a, a bit more legit. Uh, <laughs> I personally, I had a, a fantastic experience. So we actually moved over there because uh, Ian was with Ernst and Young, oh, and yes. um, in my early days, I. As much as I studied to be an accountant, I swore I would never be an accountant. And I was in marketing and <laughs> went to the Channel Islands and went to the uh, for my first interview and was told uh, we do not need marketing in the Channel Islands because people throw money at us. So what's your next skill? And that's when I got into accounting and I ended up being a trust accountant for Roth Rothschilds. Wow. So that was really interesting in that um, basically, very simply, they divided the wealth pool into five teams 
And literally, you would know the people that were in the fifth and the fourth team, maybe. They were like your actors and actresses that we all know. Huh? And then literally in the higher wealth teams of like three to one, and I was I was managing uh, team one, it's people wow. you don't even know in the world. So yeah, it was quite interesting, all the things that kind of happen. And yeah, very, very, very interesting. And uh, eye-opening as well, like... Um, certainly gave us a good insight into trust accounting, into unit trusts and all of that sort of stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, and how the wealthy manage to keep their wealth, I imagine. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, wow. no, it was, it was very, it was it was a lot of like family wealth. So there would yeah. be lots, lo lots of members of the family that you were um, helping to manage. So, yeah, it was very interesting. Oh, fascinating. I mean, many of us, I know not everyone likes Succession, but um, have you been watching Succession, the TV show? I've watched a couple of episodes, yes. <laughs> it makes me think of that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. And so tell me a little bit of your journey with property, because you guys have invested before positive real estate. I understand you had a property in, was it Burley? Burley Heads. Yep. Yep. So I think that's definitely a situation of uh, heart ruling the <laughs> ruling the head a little bit there. <laughs> yeah. It was supposed to be an investment property. It ended up becoming like our absolute love, and we probably should have either rented it out more more um, aggressively than we did, or yeah. sell it, or whatever. But the reality of it was, was that it it uh, was the source of many family holidays and uh, probably from a, an investment point of view was not necessarily the most lucrative at the time. <laughs> but yeah, but we, we managed to finally decide to sell it. And that's when we kind of went, right, we've we've got to make a few more like sort of strategic decisions on, on investment properties and not just rule with the heart. So yeah. Yeah, it is hard. We did a similar thing. I bought a, um, and this is many years ago, 2003, we bought a house down in a place called Venus Bay here in Victoria. Even the name, it was like Venus Bay and all the streets were like names of the planets. So we had Jupiter Boulevard and there was Saturn Place and like it was all, <laughs> and, um, and it was that kind of place that had the roads that weren't tar sealed because I love that old like traditional batch and we yeah. were tucked behind the sand dunes and this um little new build that um that we picked up super cheap I think a 200k or something back in 2003 um but we bought it for the love of it because we loved the beach it had 22 mm. kilometers of untouched beach but it was in the it was it was outside that zone that they talk about for um quality holiday property if you're going to holiday let anything it needs to be within a two-hour radius of any metro mm -hmm. at least that used to be the rule this was pre-airbnb mm. and um and because it was outside that two hour it was just a bit far for people to go and it became a bit of a drag going down there and it was one of those things we were ruled by the heart and we went and bought mm. it and then we held it for about 15 years and that didn't do anything and uh of course, if we'd held it through COVID, it would have probably uh, gone nuts. I hate to think what it's worth now. I haven't had a look. But um, the heart is not always the best place to start with our investing, is it? Um, no. And sometimes, I mean, like, I, I don't even know if it, like, articulate this correctly, but if I knew now what what what, I, what we know now in comparison then, I you know, Things like, for example, it was an it, it wasn't an old dilapidated apartment, but it certainly was like we did renovate it, but it was always that sort of average apartment on the Gold Coast. And so would never like sort of achieve like high, high premium um uh holiday rentals. Right. And we were always competing against the next newest building that was coming on board all the time. So from a right. from from that perspective, it um it, it yeah, it just it 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 was your very much your it was the almost the sort of second tier holiday rental we loved it we thought it was like a palace but it was never going to get the the high premiums that you you know and it was on the beachfront it it had beach views and everything but yeah there was always other apartments that were 
newer and shinier and yeah right and and outperforming um mm. interesting and so on that vein of knowing what you know now how has I mean because you're in a unique position right you as CFO like you are part of the leadership team here at Positive Real Estate um, you work very closely with Jason and Sam. So you're privy to a lot of conversations about wealth creation, about the property market, about risks in the market, about what works. You see, um, much like myself, you see what clients do that work, what clients have done or might have brought to the table that didn't work for them. Um, how has being part of positive real estate changed how you view property investing and what you do moving forward how what impact has that had um I think probably just like like as I say you, you absorb a lot of the information by being in the in, in the roles we've in and and I've also like also especially pre-COVID when there were all the live events I'd go to them mm -hmm. listen for myself as yeah. well as like trying to understand from a business perspective but I think the key is is that there is a model that works and you do need to have a little bit of advice on that. And like, as yeah. I say, like, so things where, I mean, I think of myself as being pretty savvy when it comes you to are. money, but yep. there's just certain things you just don't know until you know them. And yeah. so things like I didn't know, you know, old build versus new build, depreciation schedules, all of that sort of stuff that when you get exposed to it, you're able to understand it. And certainly in my position, I can understand it, but I didn't know all about that sort of stuff until I sort of was exposed to it. So, you know, that's, that's probably the thing is that there is tried and tested formulas that work and you want to get on that bandwagon and 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 then try to then adapt it to what your personal circumstances are yeah yeah 100 percent. and so recently you have um had a purchase uh all of our team um like i said before are either learning to invest are getting ready to invest or are investing mm -hmm. uh, and um and you've purchased a deal through positive real estate tell me a little bit about that property deal how did you select it what was your thought process um and what was the outcome T talk me through the deal okay uh so again a little bit of uh, a little bit of trial and error so it started out that uh there was a property that was available um that was sort of very sort of mid-tier but it was guaranteed that there was already a tenant uh, in it. It, had, it was just a new build. So it, it was brand new, but they had already just put a tenant in it a month before. It was 12-month lease, all the rest. And it looked such a safe bet. Wow. Now, because I haven't been necessarily like sort of on the, on the property journey, things like we had not remortgaged in I don't know how long. So we were paying probably 50% capital down on, our, on our primary property, which was great. We were like yeah. sort of reducing that, but our servicing was not ready immediately to purchase. And that opportunity, we, we lost that opportunity because it was a ready to buy right now. And, you know, we just weren't ready for servicing. But it was going to be a comfortable, safe option for us. It wasn't going to necessarily stretch us. And I'll then stop you there for just one yeah. second, because I want to highlight the lesson here for people. So what Lynn's saying is, um, and to correct me if I'm wrong, Lynn, is is you'd had a long-term mortgage that mm -hmm. was principal and interest. You hadn't looked at it at refinancing it or anything. So it was probably at a slightly higher interest rate. And it was P&I &I and you were just chipping away and paying down your mortgage, yeah? Which is what Correct. a lot of people do, yeah. And to be fair, I did keep looking at it and the interest rate was actually okay. It was good. That's why I never did anything about it. Huh. But it had, I was literally only sitting on, you know, we were under 50 and we only had 15 years of the mortgage left to pay. So clearly we were paying a lot more capital and a lot less of the interest. Yeah. And in my mind, I was thinking that's a good thing. Yeah. But it actually really hindered us when it came to servicing because we were just trying to get an investment mortgage and not touch that. Huh. And then 
it all came about that, well, you don't really have the servicing, even though we thought we were doing really well. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't yeah. have the servicing. So then we had to then take the time and unpeel everything and back. And refinance. And refinance. And, yeah. And yeah. And suddenly, yeah. well, the reality of it ended up being that we went from not being able to service a um, $550,000 property to we were able to fund a $850,000 property and the With mortgage the refinance. more than comfortable more than comfortable ah, to do okay. it Great. so it, it increased our ability by 300 300 k so there's yeah. a once again there's a lesson in this that i don't want to to bypass people so sometimes we get in the mentality that we've got to pay debt down and we do long term we always have to have a plan to pay debt down um, it's great to make some headway with your owner occupier because it is essentially bad debt. There's no, um, you know, it doesn't provide you an income. Um, so um, what Lynn was doing, there's nothing wrong with it, but when she wanted to go and invest, the way that loan was set up and the 15 years left meant that her repayments were probably higher than they needed to be yeah. to support her being able to go and buy a quality investment property. So if she hadn't done that refinance and she had continued to chip away, she could have bought probably a middle range property at around that 500K, which then maybe would not have had the capital growth and the success that when she refinanced and, and it improved her servicing because her repayments lowered, she might've gone interest only um, for the short term so that it enabled her to borrow more. And when she was able to borrow more, she was able to do a better class of property that got a far better result. So tell us what you actually ended up buying, Lynn. You bought a property for 800 and... So we ended up buying a property, a, a two-bedroom, two-bathroom um, apartment uh, for 850000 yep. uh, through through positive. In Brisbane? And, yeah. And yep. um, I suppose... Uh, like I've done the sums and you look at the fact that two years ago, if we had been, if we'd been able to buy that property for 550,000, I've done the sums and gone, okay, even on the financing, we'd have been um, income generating immediately, even taking all that rent, it was only going to be, I think it was about 500 a, a, a week that we were going to get on it. It all, it all stacked up. That same property, so two years on, we've bought off the plan at 850. By the time we purchased it, by the time it finalized uh, six months ago, that same property was had gone from 850 to 1.3 million. Wow. Yep. And so then when I started to do the sums, um, and the other added to that was it went to 1.3 million and our rent we were when we went into the deal, we yes. were told we were going to get uh between 750 and 800 a week in rent. By the time we were renting it, we got 1150. Wow, a week! Wow, yes, that's nuts. So, that is that is a seven and a half to eight percent yield on our purchase price. Wow, okay. And so, and so this is interesting because there's a lot of information that's coming out at the moment. I think even yesterday, the Fin Review had an article about how we're beginning to see the pressure finally on apartments and units um, because as houses and townhouses become more unaffordable and we see those price increases and these price increases aren't going to stop anytime soon, folks. They've flattened mm -hmm. off already the the um the slowdown in the market that the lenders and other market um professionals were saying was going to happen hasn't happened to the extent there's no 40 percent drop we have now people's mentality stabilizing around what's happening in the market and we can see that even in melbourne clearance rates were back up at 80 percent um, about a weekend ago. So that's a that's a market that is heating up again. Add to that your immigration and the lack of supply. There is no way that this is going to get easier and more affordable 
for housing. So we're seeing this pressure on units beginning to come through, which is what Lynn has experienced. So she's bought off the plan at 850, an apartment, something that a mm -hmm. lot of people are, are cautious and scared about doing. There's this old story that apartments don't get capital growth the same way houses do. Well, I refute that. This is not a story on its own. I've had another client, Michelle, who I might try to talk into doing a um, podcast for us. And she has also made a similar amount uh, in the market, a similar story. I think Michelle made around 480K. You've made 450K capital growth in two years time, Lynn. I mean, that's amazing. And but only paying 10% and only paying for 10% deposit <laughs> yeah 10% down for those two years and god what's yeah. the return you as CFO can work that out for me your your return on investment <laughs> <laughs> but you do those numbers um yeah so but the trick here is buying quality property so yes. don't go and buy the investment quality apartment that you know has no soundproofing 800 units in the block, no sunlight, no decent floor plan. Lynn, your apartment comes with two car parks. It's in a premium building, a boutique. Um, so that is one thing that we did stretch for. And that yep. was the, it, it was an additional 50,000. So it yep. was going to be 700 and something. We then put the 55 towards an extra um, park. parking space. Great. And I do think like, as I say, at first you're, you're hesitant. You go, oh, should I do it? Should I do it? But actually, I do think that it, it it is worth it, especially when you are trying to command those high professional rents. Yeah. You do either accept that it is two professionals using the two bedrooms or a professional couple, and they will have two cars. Yeah. And I think that it just then opens the market for that high end rent. Yeah. To those to those professionals because it yeah. it sort of brings me it brings me back to a slight. Um, uh, example for, with us was as I said we spent eight years in London and I Australia has even got anywhere close with the with the fact that you know like property is at a premium we are starting to see those like pushes on rent and that now yeah. but like 20 years ago when we lived in London it was very acceptable for two professional couples to live in one apartment together if it was two but two bedroom two bathroom apartment we shared for two years when we first got to London because there was no way that we could afford an apartment on our own. That's and we nuts. were, you know, two couples married and everything. And I mean, at the time, Ian and I were in banks and we were earning a fortune, but it just was not even the done not thing feasible. to try and get an apartment on your own. And you will start to see that here as there is a push because people want to live in the nice areas. Yeah. And so it will be that, yeah. you know, those people like sharing and stuff like that again. So yeah. you want to facilitate that. And that's when we said like two, two car parking spaces was, was essential. And as it's turned out, the people that are renting from us are, are in the, um, in medical one's a doctor and the other's an anesthetist. And, you know, they've got two wow. small children and they, they yeah, they, they've taken and the apartment. The lifestyle. Yeah. Yep. And you know, we probably had about two or three applications of similar, similar quality uh, tenants. Yeah, yeah, because you're, you know, you're close to the CBD in, um, in Brisbane, you're in a, um, one of the premium suburbs um, in Brisbane, and, um, and you've got a boutique um, apartment and a boutique uh, development, yeah, it's not mm. like a big, crazy high rise, it's a... No. Um, and there's many... lots of, I think there's lots of facilities around it. So that's why I think you can, you can yeah. live in a smaller, like sort of space because of the, the, facilities. All the facilities around you and all the yeah. space around you. Yeah. Yeah. No, it sounds amazing. All righty. And so um, anything else that you wanted to share that I haven't covered off anything that you think is important for somebody considering investing? Is there anything that um, I haven't sort of tapped on that you think you would want to know when you start your investing journey? I just think to to glean as much information as you possibly can on the thing, because as I say, sometimes your assumptions, while they are grounded in 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 good values, like as I say, I thought 
paying down my mortgage was the best thing. Um, you do realize that, yes, you, you know, with a bit of advice and a bit of help, we got a strategy that's actually increased our wealth yeah. in two years beyond Massively. whatever we could have done had we just paid down our, our you know, our, our, our private home and the growth in that. It's Yeah. Yeah. yeah you can't save yourself wealthy. Um, mm. We talk about that all the time. Um, awesome. Awesome. And so um, as I wrap up, um, tell me if Lynn today could go back to young Lynn um, from, I don't know, maybe the Guernsey Islands or, or all the way back to Zimbabwe. What would you say to young Lynn? What would you want young Lynn to know today that you think would have the most impact on your your journey in a positive way? Uh, it's a hard one because I actually have no, I, I think the, the the journey we've taken has, got, has gotten us here, but I definitely do say that buying well in the beginning and yeah. making sure that what you buy is of value to other people. And so like either it's, you know, going to rent well or sell well is, you know, stretch yourself as much as you can yeah. at the time of purchase because it will pay dividends by, yeah, by, yeah it will pay dividends to to, to do that. Um, awesome. Yeah. And folks, that's coming from our CFO. That's coming from an accountant. <laughs> <You've usually laughs> so you don't have to take my advice, you can take hers. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, <laughs> you know, all the disclaimers, go get your own financial advice. <laughs> um, <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, Lynn. Thank you for sharing. And um, obviously we love having you on the team. We're so lucky to have you and Ian. Uh, and uh, I'll see you around the traps shortly. Um, but thanks again, Lynn, for being part of our fabulous podcast. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Bye for now, guys. Hey, thanks for listening to Property Investor Tales. Remember to subscribe so you get notified every time a new episode drops. As you can guess, I love hearing people's property investor tales. So if you'd like to share yours, then please get in touch with me via email at propertyinvestortales at positivementor.com.au. We would also love your feedback and I would appreciate a five-star review over on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Remember, you can watch all of these podcasts over on YouTube at Positive Mentor or at positivementor.com.au. Until then, take care, happy investing, and bye for now.